of all the talks of the Next.js 14 rollout, the one that got me most excited was the Sam Selikoff talk about the Lego architecture that they're trying to build into the app router. So what am I talking about there? Well, imagine that you've got a database you want to talk to or a third-party service provider that you want to talk to. Well, instead of hard coding all of those integrations in your application, instead what they can do with RSCs and server actions is they can give you a library where all you need to do is set some environment variables in your application, then you import their library, and you literally just drop some components on your page, and they automatically talk to that third-party service using RSCs and server actions, and they make it really easy to do that integration. I mean, drop dead easy. The only problem was that he also covered doing a SQL execution inside of a server action, and everybody freaked out about that and forgot about that whole Lego concept. So what I want to do in this video is double down on teaching you that Lego concept because it is really, really cool. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the integration we're going to test out is with Terso. Terso is a distributed SQLite database. I've gone and created a simple database. It's called BlogDB, and it holds one table which has blogs in it. They blogs have a title and some body content. Now, here's the example that we're going to build on top of that Terso database. It's just going to show the blog entries at the top and then have a form at the bottom where we can submit new entries. Now, this is actually built on top of the Pages Router, and we're going to get to that in a bit because I'm going to show you how the Pages Router doesn't do this Lego concept, but the App Router does. So let's jump into the App Router and actually start connecting this database. Now, of course, all of this code is available to you for free over on GitHub and the link in the description right down below, including in the README, the setup for how we set up the database. Now, I'm going to assume that you've done all that, and we're just going to go and start bringing that database into our application. Now, over here in the main page of our application, we just got hello there. Now we want to go and do is integrate our Terso database into our application. So I'm just going to bring in our library and then connect to that database. So I'm going to bring in create client from libsql client, and I'm going to create a client and just give it the environment variables that we put into the environment. And that would include the Terso URL. That's basically pointing at a specific database. And then the Terso token, that's going to be our authorization details with Terso. Next thing we want to do is execute a select against that database so we can get some data. Of course, we need to await that. So let's make this an RSC. And now we've got our data. And then to display that, we'll just replace the hello there with a map that's going to go through and get every title and body and just show it. Let's hit Save. And now on port 3000, we can see that we have our pages app router, and it's going to the database and getting that exact same piece of data. Awesome. So now let's go and build this into a Lego block. Let's go create a component out of this that has both this list as well as a form where you can go and submit a new blog entry. So I'm just going to create that locally. We'll create a new RSC blog list. And we'll just take the content out of here and paste it into there. And I'll rename that as RSC blog list. And I'll bring that into the page. And then I'll just use it. And there we go. Refresh. Everything looks OK. So now let's go and bring in a form so we can make mutations against that. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a form tag. And then inside that form, I'm going to bring in some form fields. That includes a label as well as an input for title and also one for body. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. Looks good so far. So let's bring in that submit button and then submit to that database. So we'll scroll down here, and right after that input, we'll bring in a button. All right, so we've got our button here. It's a submit button, and instead of an on-click, it's got a form action because it is a server action-driven button. When you click on this button, that form action, server action, is going to get run, and that is going to execute the SQL against the database. And that's where a lot of folks freaked out in that presentation because they're like, no, never put SQL inside of a component. Okay, fine, don't put SQL inside of a component. Last week I did a video showing four different other ways you can add abstractions between this form action and sending stuff to the database. You can certainly do that, but the real point here is that you can encapsulate everything going on with this database 
inside of this component, whether it's going direct or whether it's going through an abstraction layer, you're still encapsulating it inside of that component, which is really cool. So let's hit save here and try it out. Now I'm gonna hit submit. So now I've got a new post, but we have to hit refresh in order to see it. Well, what we really need to do is revalidate this path. But if I'm in the RSC blog list, do I really know what path I'm on? I could be on a detail page. I could be on the home page. So what we really want to do is add a way for the page that is using this RSC blog list to say, cool, after you're done, then tell me and I'll revalidate my path. So to do that, I'm going to add an on submit function. This is just a function that gets called when I do a submit and whatever the container component is can do whatever they want with that. And in this case, the page is going to call that revalidate path. Now I need to add some support for that. So let's go down into our button handler. And after I'm done with my insert, I'm going to call that on submit. Now over in the page, I'm going to add an on submit and that on submit is going to revalidate that path. The big trick here is that that on submit also has to be a server function. If you try and just give it a basic function, you can make no, 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 that could be available on a client. You can't do that inside of an RSC. So you have to define this as a async server action. All right, let's hit save. And now when I hit submit, it shows up just fine. The only problem here is that conceptually, this is an abstraction leak to a certain degree. But before we get to fixing that conceptual leak, let's have some fun because actually we aren't in just a single repo here. We are in a turbo repo mono repo. So we have another package called UI where we can go and take this RSC blog list and put it inside of that package. And then any application in our bevy of mono repo applications can use this RSC blog list if it just sets those environment variables. So let's go do that. Let's go bring RSC blog list into our UI. To do that, I'm literally going to just drag it down to UI. And then over in the index, I'm going to export that, hit save. I'm going to go back over here into our page, hit save. All right, there it is, all integrated. And from that library, as opposed to from code inside of our application code base. I mean, think about that for a second. So from a customer perspective, let's say that I'm distributing this blog list as a service. All they need to do is set up their environment variables, then bring in that library, bring in that component, and drop it on the page, and boom, they're automatically connected to my service. How cool is that? That is amazing. And that's that Lego concept that he was talking about in that talk. And with a combination of React server components and client components, it actually gets even better. We can avoid this revalidate path by just using a client component as opposed to a server component. But it's a little bit tricky. So let's go and check that out. So the first thing our client component needs is the data. So actually, we need to start with a React server component to go and load that data to then hand it off to our client component. So the first thing we're going to build is a client component loader. So we'll call this client blog list loader. And in there, we'll do exactly what we did before, which is go and create that client, and we'll go and get the initial set of rows from our database. Now let's go create that client blog list component that's going to go and take those rows, display them, and show a form where you can then submit new blog entries. So this new client blog list actually doesn't need to be a client component yet because we're not actually managing any state. All it's going to do at this point is go and show the rows. But let's go and add the form and see how we do that. All right, so now that we've added the form, we can see that in order to manage the form of the client, we need some use state to go and track the title and the body. So let's go and bring in the use client to make sure that we're a client component and also use date to track those form fields. So bring in use client and use state, and then we'll track the title and the body on the client. So now cool, we have our form, but what actually happens when we click on the button down there? Well, what we need to do is we need to have a server action defined in that loader. We then pass to that client component, which the client component then can then invoke 
to go and send new records to the database. So let's go back to our loader and add in that server action. So we'll bring in this post blog function. It's going to go and take a title as well as a body and then submit that to the database and then execute a select against the database to get the most recent data and pass that is the result of the function. Now let's go and bring in our client blog list and add that to our component. And then we'll give that client blog list the rows as well as on submit. Now that on submit is going to be given to that client component so that when you hit submit, we'll go and run the server action to update the data and we'll get the new data back and then show the new data. So let's go over to our client blog list and we'll update our props to take that new on submit. And then down the button handler, we're going to call that on submit. But of course, we're going to get back some data from the server. We're going to get the new list of rows. So what we need to do is actually maintain the rows as state as well. So let's go and create some new state for that. We'll call this updated rows, and then we'll just set the initial value to the, what we get in as a property. And then we can use that in our map. Awesome. And then down here in the button click handler, all we need to do is take the output of that on submit and then set our updated rows to that. Now the only thing we need to do is export this component from our UI library and then bring that into our app and see how it goes. So let's go over to our index. And then we're going to expose client blog list as actually the loader, because really what we want to do is invoke the loader first. The loader is going to contain that client blog list. And that's what we're going to actually present to the customer as our client blog list. So now let's go back over into our app. We'll bring in our client blog list. And we'll try that out instead. Now it refresh looks good. Now we'll do one last post. All right, now there it is. How cool is that? And in fact, when you look at the API surface, that client blog list, it's so much cleaner because now we don't have to give it anything. It just works in place regardless of what page we put it on. How cool is that? The ultimate Lego block right in your hands. Now I get it. You might be saying to yourself, well, why does this rely on the app writer? Why do we need React server components and server actions to do all this? Well, before I get into that, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and support this channel. All right, let's go take a look at a pages writer implementation that I put in exactly the same repo so you can go and contrast and compare the two implementations for yourself. All right, so the pages implementation is over in the web on pages directory. And over in the source directory, there is the app in pages, and then there's the components. And components are the blog list that we've been working with so far. Now there's two sections to the blog list. There is the blog list implementation itself. Looks an awful lot like the client implementation that we just created. There's also the blog list data module, and that's the thing that actually communicates with the database in this case. It's got that create client that we've seen before. It's got functions for getting the list of blogs as well as adding a blog. So now to use that, let's go take a look over into our index. This is the home page. So I'm going to bring in, for example, get blogs from that blog list data. And then I'm going to call blog list with that rows in my page. And I mean, think of all the complexity that's leaking between my application, what I care about, and this blog list. I now have to know what data does the blog list want. I have to route the data to that blog list. That's a lot harder than it was in my app writer, where I literally just took that blog list tag and just dropped it on my page. And because I don't have server actions, I now have to actually also implement an API. So over in the API directory, we now have a new API blogs that I have to go and include as an app developer, which also talks to blog list data. Now, thankfully, blog list data exports a handy handler function that does the getting of the blogs and the posting of the blogs and all that sort of stuff. But I also have to tell the blog list component where that API endpoint is. So in this case, API blogs. So that's a whole lot more integration that I need to do with your service than I would have to do if that service was wrapped in a React server component and the server actions, as you can see over in that UI library. So whether you're working at a third-party service provider or you're working in a microservice team in a large company, you want to provide your customers, be it external or internal, with a really nice way to integrate with your service. And that's what we're getting here. 
we're getting React Server components and server actions that you can literally just, as you've seen, drag and drop on your page. You set a few environment variables and you're good to go. No other architecture outside of the app writer gives you that functionality. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I encourage you to watch the original Next.js 14 release video. It's linked in the description right down below. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more like it.